or first, I served five <clears> years <throat> from, from 17 to 22. Mm -hmm. And I got out. Mm -hmm. And I was clearly much worse mm -hmm. than before I went in. I even imagined I could be. Mm -hmm. And then I went back to the same old behavior. You know what that's like, of course. And within the next three years, I was rearrested. And at 25, that's when a judge sentenced me to a maximum sentence of 75 years. Wow. So, I would be 40 years old by the time I got out. Mm -hmm. And I had a real simple philosophy. Core, driving, motivation. Mm -hmm. You know the stories we hear about what's not possible. Mm -hmm. No one to give you another chance, mm -hmm. second chance, you're a convicted felon. We know all the negatives. Mm -hmm. So I had a simple commitment that having served 20 years in prison, mm -hmm. I'm going to dedicate the next 20 years, 20 years of being out of prison, mm -hmm. to focusing on what is possible, not mm -hmm. what's not possible. Mm -hmm. And after that 20 years, mm -hmm. I would be able to assess what is possible mm -hmm. when you decide to focus on your positives rather than your negatives. Wow. Wow. When you decide yeah. to light a candle rather than curse the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. And not what the system did to me. Uh -huh. Not why the system is to blame. Yeah. Yeah. Because Desmond, here's the key. I could very easily say, I served so much time in prison because of structural inequality, systemic injustice, systemic racism, all of those things. Mm -hmm. I can say that. And a part of it would be so believable that people wouldn't even question it. Yeah. But here's what it would mask. It would mask the fact that I made some choices mm -hmm. along the way that I have to take responsibility for in order to change my life. That power is mine. Well, you know, in recovery, you know, one of the things that they tell you is they teach you this serenity here, right? <laughs> and it says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, right? And things that we can change Right, are the things that are internal. Yes. You know, even when you go even to scripture, yes. right, when you talk about uh, being in the sacred place of the Most High, He that dwelleth in the secret place yes. of the Most High, that's not anything external. That's all right? internal. That's all internal. Yes. And the, you know, I mean, even down to your DNA, when yes. you break that down, dioxin, ribonucleic acid, the seed which God has planted. And so the, the answers have always been within us. You know, and you, you think when the body breaks down to a certain point, it shuts itself down and heals itself from within. And the doctor would say, there's nothing else we can do. It's up to the body now because it's all yes. there. So all of that, points <clears> to, <throat> yes, there is a, a, a space uh, a, 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 where you have to actually go inside yourself to actually solve or, or, or change uh, the situation you learn that in recovery, you know, all the time. It's, it's easy to to point to right. uh, an effect. You know, and we can do that. People have been doing that for years. Yes. Um, but I think when we talk about transformation, it actually starts internally. Mm -hmm. You know, and probably maybe that's why they say the revolution will not be televised because it'll be <laughs> internal, yeah. right. not external. You know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 you probably won't even know when you when. It, Happen, you know, but one of the things too that um, even in, in in my story and, and the things that I was able to accomplish, and I, and I talk about going from being a crackhead, yes. you know, getting ready to jump in front of the train, all the way to being a uh, graduating from law school with a law degree, right? Yes. And I used to tell folks like, so with my story, that means that you can accomplish anything, you can overcome obstacles. So take the word impossible and throw it out of your vocabulary, right? But over the last few years, I, I, 
I admit, I say, you know what? I might have made a mistake. Yes. Don't throw the word impossible out of him, mm -hmm. Kevin. I used to say anything is possible when God is on your side. Now what I say, right, is that you repurpose that word. Yeah. Impossible means that I am possible, right? And that if you can commit yourself to, 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 to giving back, to yes. serving others, right, and let that be guided by love, right, you are power. You, you mm -hmm. power. Anything that you want can happen. So I, I've taken that word impossible now and said, no, I'm possible. You're possible. We're all possible. But see, that's the power. That, that to me, shows that we have power inherently. Mm -hmm. That the question, the fundamental question for us is, how are we using the power we have? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not someone empowering us, not us waiting for someone to, to come and do something for us. And, and I, in some ways, that's a, a, I consider that a safe way into this whole idea of systemic racism. Mm -hmm. And knowing the fact that you have done this work on the ground for all these years, confronting all kinds of obstacles, people on all sides of the aisle, politically, people with, um, with labels that it's very easy to call racist, mm -hmm. who would be identified as part of the system of systemic racism, and yet you found a way mm -hmm. to break through. Mm -hmm. And not just um, anecdotally or on a personal level, you found a way to break through and move the needle on criminal justice reform in the face of systemic racism. Hmm. So for me, what you have done eclipses everything that we say systemic racism is intended to diminish. So I'd like your insight, Desmond, on how you took a path to confront systemic racism in the way that you did and to be so successful in doing so. Wow. You know, just listening to you, I'm, and I'm reflecting on what we were able to accomplish and how we, you're talking about probably the most, one of the most controversial topics, you know, uh, of, of voting <laughs> rights to people with felony convictions in the most controversial state state of Florida. Yeah. Actually, three states. Some people say it's three states in one. At a time, or in an environment that breathed hate, fear, division, right? But yet we were able to actually, I guess, dice through all of that and emerge from that cesspool, right, with a victory that was just shrouded in love, forgiveness, and redemption. Right, where we were able to actually have people from all walks of life, all political persuasions, actually support this. Right, and I tell folks that we had over 5.1 million people who voted, <coughs> excuse me, who voted for you know our amendment, and that's a million more than voted for any person on that ballot. Wow. And we know that at least a million people <clears throat> who voted for Amendment 4 also voted for our current governor, which shows a wide cross-section of support. And so those votes were not based on hate. They weren't based on fear. It was rather based on love. I think what was so important, right, was to be able to cut through, right, now we acknowledge the, 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 the racist history of, of felon disenfranchisement in this country. We acknowledge that. But we did not allow ourselves to be just defined just by that moment in history. Yes. But rather, we allow ourselves to actually expand that to include so many people because the reality was, even though the in, in, in original intent of felon disenfranchisement was specifically to target newly freed slaves. Yes. Right? The reality is like a tumor left unchecked, it would grow throughout the rest of the body and now everyone is infected. 
right? Absolutely. And so we were able to actually now show that there was like so much interconnectivity, which in a, in a sense helped kind of knife through the racism because the racism is really a limited sense of thinking, right? So we were able to actually elevate above that. And what transcends the racism to me is love. Yes. Right? Yes. And, 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 and so be able to connect these people with someone who they love, who was impacted by the system, and have them mobilized and organized around that, with that thought in their head. And so it wasn't a primal response that was triggered in people when they thought about criminal justice, they thought about African Americans. You know, no, when they, when they thought about criminal justice, they thought about someone who they loved, right? And that's who they stood up for, and that's who they fought for. And we were able to be successful with that.